Welcome to episode 61 of the Clarity Compressed podcast. And today we're coming to you from sunny Orlando, Florida. Clarity can only really exist in the light of truth. Branding just isn't a tactic. It's a lifestyle change. This week we got to come to Orlando to be at the Digital Dealer Convention in Orlando, Florida. Did I mention we're in Orlando? Bottom line is that whenever I get out of the, the routine of life and the routine of business, I always begin to open my mind to different thoughts and feelings that I really didn't have before. And that is because I'm around other people that want to grow, other people that are trying to learn. And those things really do just compound and multiply. And today's interview is with a company that I've come to respect very much, uh, the young company, three years old, but I sat down with some of the co-founders and talked about why Reunion Marketing is the company they're at. And if I summed it up, I'm talking about connection. With the book that I, I'm just about to release, actually, about to release a book, by the way. It's called The Automotive Manifesto. And the book is really how brand connection can save retail automotive. So it's got automotive in the title, but really it's how brand connection can contribute to business internally and externally. The bottom line is people connect with other people. So whether you're an employer or whether your company trying to sell products, when people feel connected, they press in, they lean in, they, they stay longer, they have more meaning and purpose in what they do, they buy more things. So when people connect, is because they see themselves in whatever you're selling or offering as an employment experience. Reunion Marketing is a great story of a young company who started from scratch, drained their personal savings, and now have a 50-person marketing agency just three years later. And I think when you, when you see the interview and you hear these guys talk, you understand there's something special about how they view people and how they connect. So I hope you enjoy this interview with Dave and Dane from Reunion Marketing. Okay. Yeah. So, I, it's a very special day. Um, we've been friends for a while. Actually, we've been we've been internet. We're gonna friends. be good friends for a while I can now. Tell. <laughs> and, um, I want to talk about a few things that may be out of the box for you guys a little bit uh, in interviews. So I'm gonna surprise you. What we're gonna talk about. But first, um, why don't you just introduce yourself and uh, talk about how we met? Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. Less than a minute. Yeah. Who you are? What you do? Easy. Dave Sponicky, founder and CEO of, uh, of Reunion Marketing, and uh, I mean, we met really at these shows, and uh, we've been really impressed with your branding and what you've been able to, to learn and teach the, the crowd, and we like to follow what you're doing. It's uh, We learn a lot from you. Well, you don't have to talk about me. I'm talking about you. I appreciate that. Okay. You're the founder of Reunion Marketing. That's right. Yep. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. I'm co-founder and the brand and public relations manager. My name is Dane Seville, and uh, I don't know where I was going with that, so I'll stop there. Yeah, that's who I am. And we all, <laughs> oh, we met, we met, he, same thing, at conferences. I remember uh, friends of ours, and then uh, like Dave and other people were talking about you. I met you, and then been following you ever since, so. Okay, so I didn't know you were a co-founder. Yeah. Okay, that's really cool. Why don't you, you can do this in tandem. So I really want to talk about the entrepreneurial journey a little bit. You know, your marketing yeah, it's agency. It's a fun story, fun right? story. So I don't really know the story, but I think a lot of the people that are watching, listening, either have entrepreneurial aspirations or they just enjoy um, the stories and the struggles of people who have tried to build something. And you guys obviously have been successful doing it. Yeah. Um, you can talk about where you started, and I'd also like to talk about where you are now. If you want to start that out, and then I'll talk about Westchester yeah, a little bit. I was, oh, I was sick of the same oh, thing. Same page, same page. Same page. <laughs> Going away. Uh, yeah, oh, that was an important time. So. Um, so, Dan and myself, uh, three other folks, uh, all used to work at a 33 store uh, group in North Carolina. And the one other person that's one of the co founders also, uh, he, he worked at Erson Young, but a friend of ours uh, and then a lifetime friend of one of our other co founders. So, we all used to work there. I was the marketing director, um, you know, different people that are, are servicing all the different dealerships and coming up with the plans. In the last three years we were there, we increased the website traffic and lead volume of bringing stuff in house and creating strategies by 400%. And we're talking automotive specific. Automotive yeah. specific. So the company's revenue uh, almost doubled. It was a well, 75% increase in three years. So for 33 stores, you can imagine. I don't want to say I don't want to say the number because they're a private group, yep. but it was massive a massive change. Yeah, we're talking about a ton. And so we said, you know, we have the ability to do this on our own and help out that many more people. Yep. So we ended up deciding to do it. We left with zero clients because we didn't want to build clients while we were working there. Yep. Started from scratch, we got retirement, and 
small loans, but there's no venture capitalists. We just said we believe in ourselves. So self-funded. You know, we, yeah. I mean, one hundred percent. It was incredible. We're working out of Chad's apartment to get kick started. Uh, really, after a while, about a month and a half, they're like, you know. You guys really need to stop working in the coffee lounge because you know this is where people come in and get coffee. So then we needed to move to Dane's yeah, house. Yeah. So whenever uh, Marini was first getting launched with Dave and Chad, uh, I would work my job at a different agency. So I left Leaf. Yep. And I went to a, a more traditional advertising agency. And so I'd work my day job, and then from like six to midnight, I'd write copy for reunions clients as we were building that. It was about three, four months maybe. Then they were able to bring me on board, and so the office moved from the coffee area to my living room. So we bought a couple computers. We had like one of those old school hard lunch, uh, uh, high school lunch tables, couple hard chairs. Chad put a huge hole in the wall that he never fixed. And uh, in, in downstairs in the yeah, uh, they're throwing you under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> then we eventually moved to then to our first office after a few months in the in the house. So and how, yeah. how long? What was the what was the time period? We're just gonna let that car be the car. Um, what was the time period between when you decided to go and when you moved out of the house? Well, so, so time period we, we decided that we were gonna do it January fifth of fifteen. We incorporated in April 1st, and then we left on May 27th. Okay, so May 27th is when you first like started first left, on your own journey. Yeah. And, and from there to when we got to Dane's house was about two and a half months. We ended up leaving Dane's house the end of October, or yeah. the, the mid-October as we moved into the new office. Yep. Which we stayed at for a year, then moved to the second office and stayed at for 18 months, and now we're in the, our third spot already with the growth, which has been just a... In what, a, two years? Uh, three it's, years? Or it's three, yeah, a little bit more than three years now. About three and a half yeah. And what size is the company right now? Uh, we've got 48 employees, I think, right and now. And a couple and, uh, contractors, some interns, things yep. like that. Congratulations. Yep. Yeah, thank so you. So in yeah. three years, from two, 48. Yeah, it's... Uh, Pretty exciting, you know, it's and uh, incredibly exciting. You know, you're such well, a low key guy. <laughs> Actually, this is probably the most energetic I've ever seen. It's probably because uh, well, I mean, it's energy, uh, yeah, right? you know, it's nuts to, to, to take that leap, though, you know, and because yeah. because we left. I mean, I had a, a an eight month old as my youngest, and my wife's a stay at home mother, yeah. and took all my retirement out and went eight months almost without a paycheck. And wow. it's like, I mean, but yeah. we were just so confident in How what we were able to do. Time? 32 and I don't think that if anyone's ever been in that position where you have a young child and you have a family even if you have a nest egg that you can start to draw from not getting a paycheck is uh, really unnerving there's some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and stuff along the way that's on really that, unnerving but uh, like your wife is a very special person. Yeah, well, she, you know, she, his we, wife is never really met her, phenomenal. I didn't tell you that. We call her Saint Sarah, but I mean, yeah. she was as confident in our ability to do this as we were. You know, there, it, it, and I know it sounds like it might be fake, but I was, I was never personally worried with the team that we had. You know, we're a reunion because we did it and we reunited together to come back and do this. Cool. I mean, this is like the best group of of founders that could create something together that, that I could have ever now, asked for. And it's uh, it's an amazing, very special thing that we're doing. He's talking about us, but I got to brag on him for a second. He's the type of guy, imagine, you have your job, you got a career, you're safe, and he convinces you to leave your job, not just you, but you and four other people, to leave your safe jobs you've had for years to start something that you don't know where it's going to go. Oh, and one guy leaving the same day as him. I mean, that's pretty remarkable. Of, of the is. confidence we had in his vision, and understanding of, of what we were gonna do. So oh, that's a, give me data. Uh, <laughs> you big old teddy bear. Yeah. You guys are just working this out. <laughs> so, this is it. We get to the hard issues. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask. So I talk a lot about company culture, and I think I always am very interested in company culture because that's been really. I'm not that smart, but I know people. And I know how people want to feel connected and they want to do something together. From the very beginning when I started my business, I knew I wanted to do it with other people. I knew I wanted to build a team. And obviously you've built a large team now. 48, the dynamics totally change at that size, right? Once you get a dozen people, the dynamic totally changes when it was just a few of you in a living room. Right. Now yeah. you're at 48. Now you're at the point where you're starting to have layers of leadership and yep. layers of management, yep. right? Yep. New skill set needed. So why do you think people sign up to, to like throw in with reunion marketing. What is it about your company or what do you want it to be about your company that makes people willing to leave other jobs, right? Great employment market, everyone's got a job. 
So if you're going to get good people, it means they're leaving somewhere else yep. from here. So what is it about reunion that you really try to? I can I can speak to this more like not I want to say superficial, but more high level things. And Dave might be able to dive more into like the actual like heart of the company. But you know, like we use some of our social media channels. Like we use Facebook to show culture, yep. Instagram to show culture. So we use certain channels to really show like the internal workings and like how we have fun. Yeah. Like we do snack Wednesday every Wednesday. So someone volunteers to make something, whether it's like pasta or you know baked good, and everyone gets yep. together for. 15, 20 minutes, we all just hang out in the middle of the day. Yeah. You know, and then we do things that like we have partnerships with local colleges like NC State and UNCW. This is like we had a group of UNCW students that came yep. and with their professors and like saw the inner workings, walked through the, the entire building, had nine uh, different speakers talk to them about things. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think a lot of ways to, to acquire that talent, you know, we're <coughs> getting them, you know, just their even rising graduates mm -hmm. to get them interested, whether it's an internship or just yep. an entry level job, because they get to see firsthand, whether it's through social channels or through those partnerships, mm -hmm. just who we are. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I guess to build on that, I mean, who who is it we are? That's something that we, we define. We took a lot of a lot of time really saying this is what our culture is. And so there's there's a lot of companies out there that go after aspirational core values. This is what is what we call them. You know, here's what we want to be. Here, and we you know we said that's that's not really the approach we want. You know, yeah. what is it about us that we that really makes us great? And so we we, we you know at this point we we're about 15 to 20 employees. And so we just we were talking about each employee's great qualities that that really and Embodied who reunion was, and yeah. it's like, you know, what 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 is it about, you know, the grit of of Sandy, you know, and her yeah. ability to elevate others, and yeah. and so we, we whiteboarded, I mean, hundreds of different words, and then we kind of uh, clustered them together, and so we came up with our core values around who we were and what what was it that we loved about our culture, mm -hmm. and so now, you know, when we're making hiring and firing and promotion and demotion decisions, it's built around. The, the embodiment of that culture and so I think one of the reasons that, that people want to come work for us and we you know we, we get hundreds of people that want to come work for us now it's because we've created this very special thing there it's a, it's a family That's thing so it's, cool. it's a reunion you know that, that feeling of when we all came back together is yeah. still there within the entire company. Yeah. And I will yeah. say, allowing dogs to come in the office is pr pretty no, therapeutic, yeah. too. So that's, that's, that's the thing these yeah. days. It's yeah. a thing. Yeah, I adopted my baby when we are in the house, and she still comes to work every day of the week. So. That's so great. <laughs> well, let me say this, like, to just drill deeper on that for a second, because I think it's it's very difficult sometimes for companies to understand what that is. And like when I talk about brand and brand connection, I right, talk about it's the feeling that people get. Mm -hmm. It's not what you tell them it is, right? Let's be honest. People love Snack Wednesdays. Right, but no one's gonna stay at a job because you have snacks yeah. on Wednesday. Right, that's a good part of the culture. If you have a pallet wall, that's great, but no one ever stays or comes to a job because you have a pallet wall. Right, that enriches your culture and your values enrich your your culture brand. But what do you think if brand is a feeling of connection? What do you think? I'm gonna force you to try to distill it down. <laughs> right, why do people stay? Like, I'm gonna let you give me like. A short sentence. We'll start there, and then we'll bring it down. Okay. Why do people stay at Reunion Market? Like, what, what do they feel? I, I think uh, they really feel that we care about helping other humans. I think that, I mean, that's one of the core things that we want to do is we want to go out and and help and change change the world and be positive. I mean, so you know, you see us out here with different vendor partners. That, I mean, people don't say negative things about us no. because because we're positive and we want to, to carry that positivity out to others. Yeah. And I've experienced I, that firsthand. It's just all that to say, like, I just want you guys to think about that a little more deeply because you don't often get the time to do it. Right? Yeah. You have a yeah. growing, successful, healthy company. Re reflecting is important, and it does get lost in, in the speed of, of growth sometimes, but I, I think that's great advice. Yeah, and, it's, I, I'm it's always... and I'm interested to see, I'm sorry to cut you off. Oh, yeah, no, go. I'm, I'm interested to see what your people would say if you said, what is the feeling you get? What are the feelings you get, and why do you stay? Because once you get, like, you're, you're approaching the 50 person mark, it's going to change again. When you get to 100, it's going to yeah. like, you're at the point now where you have less control of your culture than you ever will, right? Like, or less control than you've ever had, and yep. every person you hire, you as founders have less control than you've ever had. Yeah. Yep. And your people now are going to be tasked with creating and maintaining the culture. Yep, yep. Um, yep. And so I can tell that it's deep rooted, and I can tell you from experience that it can perpetuate past that. Um, and so I'm really curious what your people would say if you asked them that question. That would yeah, be too, probably, actually. <laughs> yeah, it'd probably be pretty, pretty easy for you to I, execute too. Yeah, I, I think that they would probably say similar things. But I mean, it's always it's always just great to hear that stuff. I mean, yeah. we we we've done some internal surveys and things like that, but that's just different than. Yeah. Um, ask the them about the feelings. I'm curious. Yeah. Ask them about the feelings, and I think that'll help you get some words because it's hard. Yeah. yeah. What is your What is your employment brand? 
right? It's hard to distill it down to something that's actually yeah. meaningful and that connects. So I'm just uh, that's what I want to do. I'm showing you guys to think about something yeah, for really sure. special that you actually have. No, I like that perspective. Yeah. yeah, and I think for people watching and listening that are building anything, whether you're a startup, whether you're a company that's 20 people, 50 people, 500 people there is nothing more important than understanding who you are and why people are willing yeah. to stay right again in a tight labor yeah. market people have opportunity yeah. they're getting offers from other places right you say you have hundreds of people that want to work with you knowing why exactly that is and capitalizing is very unique yeah. and rare yeah. and i think that whatever service i mean you specialize in automotive but you guys operate in a lot of other verticals too don't you yeah yeah i mean we're, we're still 75 percent 80 percent automotive but yeah. i mean our our, our plan and we're actively working you were 100% on 100% in the beginning probably yeah exactly yeah, yeah, yeah right so so you're diversifying which yep. because people are people right yeah, marketing yeah. is marketing yep. different products different services yeah. so um yeah i think that anybody trying to build anything it's it's important to show companies that can actually do it that actually are caring about their people and doing it. and in this human connection economy we live in like that's how you win yeah, yeah. that's right that's how you win yeah. so last question Okay, so I know we kind of didn't go marketing. So what did <laughs> oh, no, it's good. I like it. <laughs> this stuff is, is just as uh, exciting to talk about, though. So, yeah, it's I mean, probably yeah. more exciting. Yeah, yeah. Because it doesn't matter what you do. It's how you do it, who you do yeah. it with. What is Matt Triana's face going to look like when he realizes we did a podcast together? Go. <laughs> It would be like an amalgamation of depression, <laughs> shock. Like think of like if you lay, think if you like laid on a tar pit and as you melt into it, <laughs> what would that face look like? A little terror, a little sadness, and just sort of like defeatist. That's how I would describe it. You're yeah. never gonna be able to beat that. Well, no, I mean, nope. I I will say one thing. I think I think uh, he's gonna say I am never not going to a conference again. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he's never good. not oh, going he, to he'll buy his own come. ticket. I mean, no, I mean, if he, if, he, yeah, if he wants to come to one of these, I mean, with uh, with 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 how uh, it's getting complicated, with how, how, how customer focused he is, I mean, he, uh, I mean, he, he is such a, a great embodiment of customer service, which is such an important part of, of this. But I'm positive that's the, the response is going to be, I'm going to the next one, guys. I have a hundred bucks. I have a hundred bucks. Hundred bucks says Chad took a picture of us sitting here and hey, I already Chad. sent it to him. Chad, can you come here for a second? I'm here. No, you, we just need to get Chad in the shot, too, just to increase the intensity of Did Matt you take Triana's a picture face. of this intent to, to, to Triana yet? No, but I just texted him and told him he's getting picked on. <laughs> so, <laughs> so okay, so you get the question of the day, too. What is Matt Triana's face going to look like when he realizes this just happened? So Matt's like the nicest guy in the world. Yes, he is. So, Which is why we pick on him. Which because is why it's so fun. <laughs> that means um, he's nice. But the thing is, is he's just going to look like this. Because for him, <laughs> it's just another thing. Karate man that crying he's gonna the try inside. And get <laughs> Perfectly monotone in the best way possible. He's but one of my favorite people. He's not gonna, yeah. No, he is awesome. I'd be yeah, jumping yeah, up no, and down. Matt's upset. a good guy. But Matt, Matt doesn't He'll be do throwing that. stuff, cursing. He's, yeah. Cool as a cucumber, that phone. guy. He's just so, gonna yeah, do some yoga probably right yeah, now. And just, yeah. just work that stress out. out. So this, by the way, is the chat they referred to in the beginning. The company started yes. in his apartment. Was it apartment? Yeah, pretty much. So, the break room of the apartment. Yeah, the you, know, yeah, sorry, yeah. you guys got to quit doing Common this. <laughs> so yeah. here you go. Absolutely. Some of my really great friends from Reunion Market. You can stay for the exit. And um, thank you guys for just being so kind to me and hey. being a part of good, positive energy and motion in automotive and in marketing in general. You guys are the best. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having yeah. us. Appreciate it, man. There you go. So there you have it. Was I right? I mean, where can you find more genuine people than that? And a lot of people are trying to grow businesses and have these big dreams and aspirations. But the bottom line is when you put the people first and you want to connect the people to the other people and that's the priority, when that happens, you grow. It's amazing how that works. And guess what? When that happens, when you sell, guess what? People buy. People stay loyal because people connect. So that's the principle of this episode. It's time to connect with other people. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you go and you connect with other people, whether you're in leadership or whether you're selling or whether in just your personal relationships or whatever it is that you're doing, make connection the center of what you do. Hope to see you soon. One of the places that I'm speaking or talking, I have a lot of information to release soon. I'm gonna be releasing a book um, this week. Actually, the day this releases is gonna be speaking at President's Club.
So when you're watching or listening to this, I will be speaking or have already spoken at Driving Sales President's Club in New York City in May. I'm going to be speaking at the Digital Marketing Strategies Convention in Napa, Florida. Napa, Florida. Oh my gosh, there is a Napa, Florida. Let's start this again. We have a lot of stuff going on right now. Two things I want to talk about really specifically. Number one, I already mentioned it. We're launching a book. I can't find out where the card is, but you can pre-order the book now at theautomotivemanifesto.com. And something I'm really excited to announce that I haven't announced on the podcast or anywhere else really yet is that we are putting on a live event in Rochester, New York on May 8th called Clarity Con Automotive. It is, we're bringing some national speakers to have a really intimate event, high access, fireside chats, good food in a room, gonna work out and make some progress. We're gonna work out, we're gonna work out some issues. This is terrible. <laughs> Hey, who's speaking? <laughs> hey. We're bringing in Dale Pollock's flying in for the event, Adam Robinson, CEO of Hireology, Candace Crane, top 100 women in automotive, she's coming, Glenn Pash, the CEO of PCG Companies, Michelle Dinojean, the Chief Marketing Officer of Roadster. I'm gonna be giving some keynotes, we got some great surprises, and again, high access to the speakers so you can actually get your questions answered. May 8th in Rochester, New York. If you're in Buffalo, New York, Rochester, or Syracuse, it's just a really short drive. It's also really easy to fly into Buffalo if you're not from around. Also releasing a book called The Automotive Manifesto. We're gonna be, if you buy a ticket, you get a copy of the book. Um, also gonna be speaking in New York City at the Driving Sales Presidents Club, talking about building a brand. Also going to be speaking uh, sometime in May, mid-May, at the Digital Marketing Strategies Conference in Napa Valley, California, put on by PCG Companies, Brian and Glenn Pash. Um, that's a great weekend and also a really great opportunity to connect with other business people, other dealers that are trying to do the same things and be innovative with their thinking and their business model. So I'm exhausted. That was a lot of stuff to say. And then finally, thank you so much for listening to the podcast, watching the podcast, engaging with the content on LinkedIn and Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. Um, however I can help you move forward is what I'm about. So please reach out, DM. I'll help however I can. Until then, pursue clarity. And that was really difficult to shoot an outro.